Dr. Russell Blaylock is our guest for the next 52 minutes or so. BlaylockWellnessCenter.com is his amazing website. And I gush over some of my guests that have been so accurate, but I've got to say, with Dr. Blaylock, five years ago, four years ago, during the whole H1N1 hoax, he was so on target that it would make you get the regular flu, that, that, that it would paralyze people, and he got attacked nationally, and then he got proven completely right. He just has a lot of courage, and he travels the world speaking to groups of scientists and medical doctors. Uh, he is a retired board-certified neurosurgeon and, of course, professor uh, who, who taught uh, brain surgery, and he uh, invented uh, many uh, forms of brain surgery and procedures, so he's a brain surgeon, brain surgeon. You got the term. Hey, I'm no brain surgeon, but I know... You know, Obama's a liar, but, I mean, he is a brain surgeon. Uh, and, you know, my dad is a dentist and oral surgeon and managed 22 clinics and then helped manage nationally for another a medical firm. And he was telling me the same stuff the last few years that Blaylock was. And my dad did get out of medical management um, two months ago. In fact, the week of Obamacare. He said they are criminally trying to wreck it. They have come to us and said, play ball with Obama and do what we say, and you can do whatever you want. And with certain HML and insurance companies, my dad said, this is mafia. And my dad, and I'm only, I'm 40 in two months, folks. My dad's only like 63. My dad could have kept working for another decade. He's in great shape and loves working. He said, I'm, I'm not, he goes, I'm not going to be involved in something where they can put me in jail anytime. He had to testify at the legislature. They were going into other medical groups that he didn't work for, but he had to go and defend them and literally arresting heads of the companies and stuff for a T not being crossed and shutting down health care chains, uh, you know, uh, non-dental medical stuff, criminally wrecking it. And, and Dr. Blaylock, six years ago when Obama was running, four years ago, three years ago when they passed Obamacare, Six months ago on the show, he was saying stuff so horrible about it. And I did scan over the bill and the 10,000 pages of writers. And I knew it was there. But he was saying stuff so horrible that I thought maybe it's not that bad. Because how will they get away with it? Everything he said came true, is coming true. And now he's going to tell you, because he told us then, what was going to come up next. And, folks, I don't have the staff to do this. You've got to go pull up Dr. Russell Blaylock, Alex Jones, search it in YouTube. You'll get him six months ago, a year ago, three years ago, four years ago, six years ago, saying they're playing. He's read all their books. He's followed how socialist health care is rolled out with the fascist above it. And he is now here to break down their plan. He said it's not going to work. It's going to wreck everything. It's going to double, triple prices. And then they're going to claim it's just, I mean, he literally knows more than anybody I've talked to about Obamacare. Okay, so he's got the floor for the next 50 minutes. That's a long intro. But we either defeat this or it's meant to bring down America. This is a Cloward and Piven bankruptcy plan to domesticate us. And, Dr. Blaylock, I want you to recap how you knew how bad it would be, what you think of where it's going. People call it a disaster. You said they were going to call it that, that it's a plan. So no one knows more about this than you. And again, I'm not trying to kiss your butt here. It's true. You absolutely have been 100% on target. How are you so on target compared to everybody else? Well, Alex, I spent most of my adult life studying uh, collectivist systems, socialism, fascism, national socialism, communism, Marxism, Leninism. Uh, I've read a considerable amount, of, uh, not only in books and testimony before Congress and uh, investigating committees, and it's taken me uh, a lifetime to get a grasp of how this system works, what they want, how they uh, attain what they want. And there's a uh, very brilliant uh, writer, Gerhard Neimeyer, who has studied this uh, his entire life, and what he shows that all revolutionary systems, the first step that you have to take is to bring in the revolution, you have to destroy everything that existed before. He calls it the total critique of society. And if you look at uh, socialist communist systems around the world, that's essentially what was done. Uh, now, some of the liberal groups, the, the liberal socialist uh, softer forms of Marxism, Leninism, they try to merge uh, pre-existing society with uh, newer revolutionary concepts. And that's more of a transitional stage. 
<clears throat> what we see is that the ultimate plan is total replacement of the old world order. Now, you remember when uh, uh, Bush made his announcement for the U.N. that we were bringing in a new world order. Uh, well, when you bring in a new world order, that means you have to dismantle the old world order. Uh, so when you look at what they've, they've done in, in, during this administration and the Clinton administration, going back quite a few years, but particularly it, it's, it's ramped up a lot recently. When you look at that, what you see is a dismantling of all our institutional systems that were based on the founding of this republic. Uh, including the economic system, the cultural system, the moral basis of America, its Christian heritage. Uh, everything is being dismantled. Uh, the plan for replacing that, of course, has been written hundreds of years ago. It's been a piecemeal plan. Uh, and if you read their literature, you know, not the, not the conservative literature, not the opposition literature, but read their literature. They outline these things quite plainly, or what they plan to do. Uh, population control, reduce birth rates, uh, eliminate large uh, percentages of the population, uh, total regulation of all individuals, destruction of the concept of an individual, uh, which is the very basis of collectivism. So when you look at all of this, and, and uh, medical care systems, one of the things I, I looked at, I looked at the English uh transition to national health care and what a disaster it turned into. Uh, and uh, I tried to warn my colleagues uh, uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, uh, I explained to them the history of how England uh, lost its medical care system, its free system. Uh, most refused to listen. Uh, they made the very same mistakes the British physicians made. They thought they were too smart to be fooled by the politicians. Then there was a group that thought, well, the politicians would be reasonable, and if we could sit down with them and negotiate with them and help them control costs, and if they saw that we were honest uh, and, and really trying to help, then they would work with us. And, uh, some of them thought, well, if we get on the committees of these uh, uh, various uh, national socialist medical groups, we can help mold it and protect the position. Exactly. You just hit the key on every front. Good people think the system's like them and think that they can negotiate with it. And then with the Delphi technique, the collectivists play along with that. But literally behind closed doors in their own literature, they admit they're just a criminal group. But but please continue. Sorry. Well, you know, this is the methodology that has been used in virtually every country that eventually slides into socialism. Uh, is, is that you've got to do this slow dismantling of everything that exists. Um, and you have to trick people. You know, there's a, there's a great writer, a writer that uh, uh, was from Poland, and uh, he wrote a book called The Captive Mind, and in it he describes what's called the Ketman. And he said the Ketman was uh, an, uh, a very uh, old uh, concept in the Arab world, uh, in which when you wanted to defeat an enemy, you pretended you were his friend. You pretended you to believe what he believed, uh, and you associated with him, and, and you would move up in his his power structure because he thought you, you were uh, with him and shared his philosophy. And he said, the whole time, it's a deception, so that when you finally get strong enough, then you crush him. And that's the Ketman technique. Well, that's what basically used is, the British system, the British politician went to the physician, made the physician think that he was his friend, uh, that he would work with him, that he'd have him on panels making decisions. And, of course, if you read uh, uh, the people, the Naren Bevan, who was one of the chief architects of the British health care system at that time, uh, it was all a ruse. The, the idea was to dismantle. Uh, the existing medical care system. And of course, it was one disaster after another, and it's still a disaster. And then they use the disasters they create to get more power each time, and they even write that in their books. I, I, I mean, take the arrogance, and we're going to play the clip after the break. Uh, Dr. Blaylock joins us here, really uh, one of the greatest minds when it came to predicting and, and now being accurate about Obamacare. He'll tell us where it's going to go now and his ideas to reverse this and defeat it. That's why he's really here today. But... 
Look at the main architect of it, the eugenicist Ezekiel Emanuel, the brother of the White House chief of staff who said, you know, create the crisis, basically. He said, of course, we're going to bankrupt health care. And that was the plan. And, and, and now now that they've done it, they always go, of course, there's death panels. Of course, we want to wreck things. Well, I want to slap their butt in jail with handcuffs. They're admitting to their fraud. Why are they so arrogant, Dr. Blaylock? Well, the arrogance comes from the fact of their power. They essentially own the media, uh, you know, through their influence. Uh, they own a great deal of the publishing. Uh, and so the opinion making in America is, is being manipulated and controlled by them. So they feel a, a sense of absolute power that there's very little that the, the average American t can do to resist. And of course, most of America is being entertained to death. They're watching football and they're watching movies and they're playing video games and they're not really studying and paying attention to what's happening. This is one of the reasons, you know, people ask me, well, you're a conspiracy theorist. And I said, well, you know, there's two uh, people that uh, would make such a statement, a negative statement about conspiracy ideas. One is the person who's an ideologue and doesn't want to believe it. And the other is the person that's totally uneducated. They're not looking at the issues. They're not trying to connect the dots. They're not studying deeply all of these events. And so they don't even know what's occurring, far less uh, uh, a logical analysis of the events. So that's your two basic groups that would make such a statement. And the other thing you have to realize, well, who created this idea that anybody believes in a conspiracy is, is uh, uh, on the French? Well, it's the conspirators. Uh, they control a great deal of the media, a great deal of publishing, uh, movies. And so they put out the idea and hammered it home repeatedly. That if you believe in conspiracies, uh, you're crazy. Of course, you know, you've quoted before even that uh, Rockefeller himself said, if I'm accused of conspiracies and doing these things, it's true, I am. That's right. In his own book written by him that came out in 2004, Reflections, by David Rockefeller, let's pull up the quote. He said, yeah, I'm conspiring to set up a planetary world government run by private interest. Sure. And, and if you read uh, some of the newer books that's been written on these uh, a very rich power elite uh, uh, quotes in the book repeatedly. Uh, they say that, you know, well, we should rule the world. And of course, this is, comes from Plato. You know, if you look at any history of social That's where it all it comes from. From Plato. All Plato. Man, that guy is so influential. But expanding on that, Dr. Blaylock, my big issue is if they just wanted to dumb down and kill off the poor, I would be against it because that's immoral and always leads to other stuff. But because, you know, they teach positive and negative eugenics in school, but we all know there's the real social engineering eugenics that the inner members of this Jacobin program that goes back to France picking up Plato's ideas, you know, got uh, 200 and something years ago. But their biggest crime is they're actually targeting the, the intelligent and the and the pure and the virtuous and really want to build a very ugly world and really just love dominating. They're really a bunch of sadists and are fundamentally evil psychopaths and sociopaths attracted to the machinery of playing God and uh, are anathema. I mean, uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about uh, their philosophy from your deep research, where Obamacare is, how, how, how well you think their program's going, because I think they've overdone it a little too much. They're wrecking things so fast, I think it's really starting to backfire, and is there a way to beat them? Um, well, yeah, you, you know, I think what people need to understand is, like I said, this is a total critique of society. This is erasing the old order. Uh, this Obama plan was designed to be a, a massive failure. Uh, and w what you're going to hear next is, well, you know, we tried to do it the free market way. We tried to mix government with free market to make it as, as uh, palatable to the conservatives as possible. But look what a mess it makes. You just can't mix uh, government uh, uh, control with the private market, individual interest, and greed, because it created this, this horrible mess that we're experiencing with this Affordable uh, Care Act. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.